Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you Hi, so much for joining us. We appreciate you. We do. Great very program much. today. This kind of program, I absolutely love mm -hmm. and adore. Uh, I have a surprise for the young man, and when I say young man, he is really a young man. Yes, he is. And God has his hand on this young man, and his future is absolutely going to be phenomenal. But he's also a writer. Can you believe? I mean, gee, start out from the blocks What's his and name? do everything. His name is Matt Albritton. Oh, that's true. And we're going to be talk to him. Ta take a look today. Ta ta uh, Dave, can you put uh, the uh, there it is right there. You, you notice on the side there that is hashtag Team Jesus. That's right. We are up to date here. <laughs> now, you know, you, you might think people in my uh, age bracket would say that's a pound sign, isn't it? <laughs> or a number sign, isn't it? No, that's hashtag. Everything has changed. It has. Uh, let's go over here because I, I want them to meet this young man. Matt, good to have you. Great yeah. How tall are you? About 6'4". Aren't you going to have him stand up? Uh, no, <laughs> I usually do that and then I disappear. <laughs> but it's so good to have you. Yeah, it's, it's great to be here. I have a surprise. I want you to look at that monitor. And your mom is in the audience. Yeah. Take a look at this. Dave, roll tape. It's great, by the way. The haters of God cannot stand the name of Jesus. That's Absolutely. True. Boy, if that isn't true, all you have to do is go to the inauguration for the President of the United States, you name Jesus, buddy, and you've yeah. got everybody coming down on you. Why? Pre President Bush was sued because Franklin Graham prayed in Jesus' name. And uh, it started in the book of Acts. Satan hates the name because in the name of Jesus, that's how we get saved. You know, we believe on the name of Jesus. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. And so Satan hates Jesus. He hates the name of Jesus. And so in, the, in Acts, when the church began, the number one attack was against the name of Jesus. Wow. That's awesome. Tell them about this young man right there. Uh, we have Matt Albritton with us today. He's an ordained minister who has traveled with his family that we just saw there, his dad and mom. Uh, into 25 nations of the world, sharing the gospel, feeding the hungry, and giving clothes and toys to orphans internationally. He's the son of the late international evangelist, David Albritton, who passed away in September 2011. So Matt took over for his dad as director evangelist of America Say Jesus Ministries and its parent ministry, Albritton International Ministries, and that's why we showed that clip for the last time we were you know what else I for you? That's the DVD wow. in its entirety. Wow, that's, that's just awesome. for you. What a great surprise! <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, yeah. uh, I, I tell you, the Lord is good. At, that's awesome. You know, uh, here you are, mm -hmm. over a decade later, Amazing. and and uh, tell me about your your basketball career. Well, uh, I was an all-state basketball player in high school. And so that got me recruited to the college level. And so I went to Division I basketball at George Washington University my freshman year. And I kind of went around. I, I ended up at Delta State is where I finished up uh, in Mississippi. But I had a lot of success in basketball. And my dad, my father, who was just on the TV, he taught me a lot about basketball. He really taught me the game as well as oh, ministry. Yeah. And How tall was he? The Lord. He was about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, he was about my height. Yeah. Yeah. So. And your mom is not short either. No, she's I mean, five, she nine, a beautiful no. lady. No. But, uh, I mean, you had coaches that, in the early days, that said, mm -hmm. you're not going to play basketball, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, coming up, I was, I was a little, I mean, I grew up, I grew a lot, you uh -huh. know, at a certain point. And mm -hmm. so... I bet you're the a, kind of guy you could almost watch you grow. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, there's a time in my life they look at the, the white guy, I didn't really, <laughs> probably didn't think that had much yeah, chance. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really look athletic, but I worked hard. I worked uh, my tail off, and my dad was pretty much my coach. That's your dad's up. genes, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 So, um, no, he, he really helped me a lot with the game of basketball. He taught me a lot. And I was homeschooled for a lot of my life because we, went, we would travel overseas. That's why you're so stinking smart. <laughs> I'm telling you, homeschool kids are 
homeschool kids and missionary kids. I don't know what God does, but it's like, okay, I'm going to dump it on you. Yeah. You've got the brains. <laughs> but I think a lot of it is you were homeschooled, though. Uh -huh. It has a lot to do with it. Yeah, and so I didn't have, I wasn't always at a, um, with a coach or at a, at a school where someone else would coach me. Yeah. So my dad coached me. My mom would teach me and my dad would coach me. Wow. Mom, so, a good mm -hmm. teacher. Oh, great. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say no on TV. That's right. She's, <laughs> she's right here. She'll yeah. come right over here, boy. Uh, but, uh, okay, n now in your, in your basketball career, how did that advance and what did that do to your thinking about, about ministry? Well, you know, throughout college and high school, I always dreamed of being a professional basketball player. And even when I was a senior, I still had that opportunity to play professional. Wow. Um, and it would be one of those things where you would start overseas and you kind of yeah. kind of grow and, yeah. and get to a higher level, higher level, and eventually you have that chance of playing in the NBA. And so uh, I had that dream. And when I, you know, my father was diagnosed with, with cancer when I was 21. And when that happened, mm. um, I was at home. It was, a, it was a summer, so I was home. And he couldn't preach at his, his church on Sunday. And so I told him, Dad, I'll preach on Sunday. And uh, I had, a, and growing up, I had a fear of public speaking. Sure. And so God was just doing something incredible, taking a fear. And, and something that he taught me was, you can't face your fears until you face your faith. And mm -hmm. God told me that, and, and I, I was thinking, you can't face your fears until you face your faith. Wow. And, and I said, God, I believe that you can really do something through my speaking. And so I faced, I said, I faced my faith. And I said, God, I have faith in this area. And so he allowed me to face my fear, which is public speaking. And since then, it's just like that fear broke. And, uh, and I wanted to be a preacher. You know, I wanted to, I still loved the game of basketball, but more than anything else, I wanted to tell people about Jesus. Wow. Mm. Your, your book, uh, this is a comment from it. No matter how many times you've failed, you must never stop believing in your dreams and the vision that God has for your life. Mm -hmm. That's we read words like that and I read words like that and I look up and I go Lord that's what I want for my life but making it happen daily mm -hmm. because you know we may be able to make it work for a moment but we have a daily process that we're in absolutely and I talk about that in, in one of those things I talk about in the book is um, having a vision for your life yeah. and speaking that vision into existence and then doing the vision and not just dreaming about it but doing it mm -hmm. and that can apply for athletics but it also can apply to ministry and uh, and so that's one of the things that I talk about. You, you say in the book your dad was your biggest fan. Yeah oh absolutely. So could yeah. you hear him yelling in the stands? <laughs> oh for sure yeah. Oh, How yeah. about mom? Yeah mom was probably trying to shut up dad. <laughs> <laughs> but, <Yeah>. Oh boy. <laughs> so when you made that transition uh, I think about Joel Osteen. Uh -huh. He was working in behind the scenes production, oh, yeah. making sure the shots were right. He was one of the cool guys that, if you look today, and a lot of them are using the shot, where, where they shoot behind the pastor and you see the audience rather than just shooting the pastor and you're wondering, they got 10 people, 20 people, is there anybody listening to him? Mm -hmm. And that changed the whole view. But, but so that was his, he was comfortable there, like you were comfortable in basketball. Absolutely. Oh, he was very comfortable, and and I had that, and as I was saying earlier, that fear I had. But I went to my dad one day, and I said, "Dad, I have this fear of public speaking, and I don't know, and I, the devil is lying to me, telling me that I'm not going to be able to preach, I'm not going to be able to do this and that. But God has laid it on my heart, and so I brought it to my dad's attention, and he said, "What would you do if there was a house fire, and your loved ones, your family, and your friends were in there burning, and you were the only one that could save them and get them out of the fire?" He said you wouldn't go in there with, with a fear, afraid of what you would say. Wow. He said you would go in there and you would scream and say, I know how to get you out of the fire. Follow me, I can save your life. And he said it's the same way with preaching the gospel because, and even a hell is so much more multiplied than just a house fire. The, the pain and, and the eternity is so much greater. And so he taught me that if, when you preach, there's a real heaven and a real hell and you gotta preach in directly like towards that, yeah. so, those souls that are out there. That is so neat. It really is to think that you're you're doing it to save yeah. uh, somebody's life. Yeah. When you when you program that in your brain, your mm -hmm. your thinking is totally different. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and that's what he really instilled in me. And I just but you pray. have you know that fear. Are you introvert by personality? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So am I. Mm -hmm. And 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 every every time I get involved in public stuff, 
I, I literally chuckled to, my, chuckled to myself because I go, God, you have got such a sense of humor. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Because to, to do this, mm -hmm. I mean, there are extroverts that would love to, mm -hmm. to have a public arena. Yeah, that's what, what they the live things, for. I think one of the things is it talks throughout the Bible how God uses our weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I true. think He uses that more than talks about our strengths, yeah, using yeah, our strengths. Yeah. And here you he, are, writing books. What <laughs> motivated this? Because well, this is a very useful uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, all ages, I enjoyed it, by the way. But all ages, it, it, it's, a, it's a format I like. Yeah. I mean, obviously it starts out that, you know, hashtag Team Jesus. I mean, <laughs> what, was, what was the motivation for that? Well, you know, I grew in, in college, I got to college and, and the Lord was teaching me how to live for the Lord. I went from a private Christian school, a small school in high school, to a, a very large Division I um, university. Yeah. And so, George, w George Washington yeah. University. Yeah. And, and I get there and all of a sudden all these temptations and things are coming away. Yeah. I, I can do anything. You're away from home and you kind of have to feel, that, feel liberated. And, and so the Lord was teaching me how to, how, you can, how to live for the Lord and be a college athlete. You know, and even with all of these different temptations thrown their way. And I saw so many, you know, I, had, I didn't have many Christian teammates, but I had a few throughout the years. And I saw many of them just fail and fail and fail out time after again. And they'd get tempted with peer pressure and that they just gave in. Mm -hmm. And I learned um, in college that you just have to run like Joseph. He said, when a yeah. temptation comes your way, you just well, have to run. Now, now you, you had, you talk about in the book, teammates that looked at you as I mean, it's, I mean, I, I would imagine they had some nicknames for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the the funny thing is, you know, some I definitely had persecution. I, yeah. I faced persecution from from teammates, and there was also teammates that really respected me. And sometimes they were the same people that persecuted me That's were the right. same ones that respected me. Exactly and I thought that right. was that was really amazing. But I remember one day they thought that I had cussed on the uh, on the floor. <laughs> they, I, I said, I said some, I forgot what I said, but they thought I'd cussed. And we go into the locker room and they were screaming, Matt, cuss, Matt, cuss. And I was almost kind of laughing like, man, one cuss word and that, that all of a sudden is a huge deal. <laughs> Even though that's not what I did, yeah. but it's just the fact that they, they respected me so much and they saw my, my life and living in the Christian lifestyle. And so when they, they wanted to catch me in anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I wrote this primarily to the Christian college athlete uh, that struggles in college because college in itself is tough, but when you throw athletics into it, it can be even tougher. And so primarily that's what it's written to, but it can also be for really anyone. This would be a great to buy hundreds of cases of them for Campus Crusade. Mm. I mean, that, that's yeah. their field. Oh, yeah. And a great FCAs. subject here. Mm -hmm. uh, you say, if you can't see your vision becoming a reality, then it probably won't. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you see it becoming a reality? You know, there's sometimes when you, you get caught up in a, in a moment where you don't see the, the vision becoming a reality. There was a time when, and I was at Delta State, I'd just begun at Delta State, and I was, I was my senior year, and the coach, I transferred twice, and so that first year I was there, I had to sit out, I could only practice. And so the coach that loved me, that recruited me to Delta State, was ended up fired. And they brought in a new coach going into my very senior season, my senior season, and he, you know, there's a lot of things going on with him, with, with uh, politics and things, and uh, he was kind of a antichrist kind of personality. And so I found myself at the beginning of the season not starting, not getting much playing sitting time. Sitting on the bench. Sitting on the bench. And it was shocking to me. I go from, you know, first team all state in high school, that played Division One basketball my freshman year. And you were full scholarship, right? Full scholarship, yeah. And here I am my senior season at a Division Two school and I'm not getting playing time. And I, I, I would talk to the Lord, I said, God, this doesn't make sense. You know, I don't see a way out. God, I need you to give me a vision again. So you'd go back to your room alone oh, and yeah. have a talk with the Lord. Oh, for sure. And, and I would talk to him and say, God, I don't understand this. This doesn't make sense. I said, God, you gotta give me a vision for my life again. And so I remember he, he, he took me to Habakkuk, the last three verses of Habakkuk, and it talks about how when there's nothing going right, how you still praise God anyway. And he showed me those verses and he spoke to me when I was reading them and he said, there's nothing you can't do, son, because there's nothing that I can't do and I'm in your heart. Wow. And I remember thinking that, meditating on those. There's nothing you can't do because there's nothing that I can't do and I'm in your heart. And I kept thinking that and I remember the next day I go to practice and I felt like all the pressure was off and, and uh, you know, I was playing good basketball before, but it was almost like now I was diving on the floor more. I was just making things happen. I was having more fun. 
and I was playing outstanding. And I remember I just started, I started about the next 10 or 15 games. I just started the next, because they had to take notice. Mm -hmm. And it was, all the pressure was off. And I was just playing amazing basketball. I ended up leading the team in three-point percentage. So you're Jesus' instrument doing that now. I mean, it was yeah, so. ju just a total change. Yeah. Wow. And so God instilled that vision, and I believe that, you know, that's the vision that needs it. My disappointments in. completely turned into divine appointments. So yeah. you're talking about the disappointment. Yeah, exactly. You're not being played. Yeah. yeah, exactly what I was, you know, just saying. It's this, you know, I was being, you know, you face a, uh, disappointments, and I think God really wow. wants to use our disappointments mm -hmm. and, and, you know, make them, turn them into his appointments. Um, I've got a little note for myself to look at 39. <clears throat> you transferred schools uh, for taking a strong stand for Christ. I was the team's leading scorer. My coach and teammates shunned me and tried their best to never give me the ball. You know, when reading your book and, and some of these comments, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about TiVo, you know, which everybody, you yeah. know, it's kind of died down now. Oh, yeah. But that was his, uh, I mean, even though Heisman Trophy and even though you had a full scholarship, yeah. it was like, no, all of that's a mistake. I'm still not going to use the guy. Yeah, and the amazing thing is, you know, Tebow wins the national championship, but he had, his eye black was John 316, and I remember everyone searching Google that <laughs> he was one of the, maybe the top yeah. rated um, searches on Google was John 316, and then he goes to the Broncos and makes a come from behind victory. Uh, upsets the Pittsburgh Steelers and has a 316 passing yards and his completion percentage was 31.6 and everyone was searching John 316 again it was the number one search wow. and so you know God was using his successes mm -hmm. um, and and just using it for his glory but everyone was going is this fate is this is this a coincidence is this God what, what's going on here? isn't this amazing that the ungodly yeah. owners and the coach decided mm -hmm. uh, we've got something better yeah and you know what it's just you always stick to the plan and know that God always has the last That's word. It. That's mm -hmm. it. He always will have the last word. That's and, I'm, and, a, and you're proof of it. And I talk about that. In my, the last chapter is God has the last word. God yeah. always has the last yeah. word. And I talk about um, when I was at Delta State and they gave me the mic because I was a senior. What would you say? And I said, well, first of all, I just want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus. And I can remember my, my heathenistic, some of my heathenistic teammates, coaches, everyone in, in our gym just started to cheer. And, and, and it was just amazing. It was just like... It was just like they were looking at me wow. and saying, man, he really lived the life his whole career. Man, oh but man. God has the last word. He always has the last word. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether you saw it, but it was on uh, the, the news, sports media. And there was about nine guys, uh, Seattle Seahawks, mm -hmm. going to the Super Bowl. And nine guys sitting around. Yeah. And each one, the, the one guy said, you know that ring. We, we all love the rings or whatever. And we all love the, you know, the, the, the camaraderie and the, and the winning and all of that. But we know Jesus Christ is our Savior. And you know, I'm going, He's better. I'm going, Jesus is the best. Mm -hmm. he, he is better than any Super Bowl ring, anything that we could ever have or in the future. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is the key to everything we do. And all the guys they shaking were all their hands. I don't know if you saw that, but I mean, I'm sitting mm -hmm. there going, you got wait a minute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there going, is this secular television or am I, am I watching Christian yeah, television? It was really neat. It's amazing. And Russell Wilson is a great. Great Christian, yes. quarter, their quarterback, yes, and uh, yeah, no, that's it's just it's Isn't amazing. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's just wow. I mean, we continue reading this. I never will forget when the moment came where my new team was playing my old team. So the team that you had left because you weren't being played. Now you now this is a new team, and and what happened in that? I mean, there's something significant that took place. Well, actually, that was a uh, t that's a testimony from another call. That was I think that's actually my sister. I had I have ten, um, ten. Yeah. There's ten uh, yes, testimonies. There's ten yeah. testimonies in there from other athletes. Yeah. And but that that's a great story. Um, and this story is about about actually what the person didn't expect, uh -huh. but became. Well, they went and she went and played her ex teammates, and and they were just trying to shut her down. Yeah. And. And they did. She had two points that game, and you know what happened? She and her she, her normal points was like out of the roof. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And oh yeah, she was averaging yeah. you know yeah. twenty yeah. whatever points right. a game, and then she goes back that night and she's 
this is my sister, so I know the story well, you yeah. know. And, but she um, tall too? And she played college basketball as well. So she's tall? Yes, she's six foot. Wow. Uh, but so she goes back and she starts praying to God and she's really disappointed at first. But then she, she just said, you know what, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna praise God anyway. And the very next game, she has 46 points, 31 rebounds, wow. 16 blocks and nine steals. And just the, the most amazing game, she ended up being on the front page of the, of the sports section. Was anyone else playing? <laughs> you, you wouldn't think so, but I mean, it was just like, it was almost, I remember there, I was there at the game. And it was just like, she was, it was like doing drills. It was just like, girls were falling over and just giving her lanes and just wow. God was just there. Oh my yeah. goodness. Goodness gracious. Uh, your words, you have to light a fire in your belly. What is that like? I mean, mm -hmm. you, good words, yeah. good words, but how do you pull it off? Well, you know, the Bible says to stir up the gift of God that is in you. And I think that's, it's kind of a similar thing, you know, get that fire in your belly. It's just that, that people are going to be against you and you're going to have to ex ex uh, expect and accept that. But you got to, wow. I mean, it's all about what you do. And so you just right. know that everything that you do is for the glory of God. And if you, if you have that mentality, and it just it takes the pressure off, but it also ha it gives you a determination to do everything you can to represent Christ in whatever field that you're in. You must love Noah because you use him as yeah. an example throughout. Mm -hmm. Explain yeah. why. Well, it's just a, a perfect story. I mean, he had the vision of the, God gave him that vision of building the ark, and he stuck with it. I mean, it was a hundred about 120 years mm -hmm. that he was building that ark, but he could have thought, man. You know, this is too big of a vision. 120 years. How do I even know that there's going to be a flood? How do I even, you know, there's. Yeah. There, he had faith, yeah. though. And the rain never came down. It always came up. So how does? What do you mean it's going to, going to flood? Yeah, and I, I, I can imagine being in a situation and thinking maybe, you know, five years would be a tough vision, but yeah. 120 years. Yeah. I mean, we think that's just a that's a and very you know, long life. You know, people now. were making fun of him all at 120 years. Oh, he yeah. was getting made fun of all uh -huh. the time. But he he stuck to the plan. He stuck yeah. to the vision that God gave him, and God, um, you know, pulled through. He never he, stopped. He never, yeah. And he's a lot of the words I just read at the beginning. That was the key for mm -hmm. you. And you talk about fire in the belly. That's, That's right. what you have to have to accomplish what God's given you. That's right. And the thing is, Satan is always right around the corner. Oh yeah. To pull that fire and to put it out. And the devil is, seems like he always screams the loudest when you're about to have your biggest breakthrough. Isn't that amazing? When you're about to have your biggest breakthrough, the devil really screams yes. the loudest. Yes. Yes. And uh, you know, but I learned through college basketball that the number one thing in the very you know, some guys will talk about that their number one experience was, you know, playing in a huge gym or in front of 20,000 people or, or whatever it might be, or a great come from behind victory. Mine was leading teammates to Christ and having that opportunity to, to wow. pray for them for so many, for such a long time and finally see their lives um, come to, and to know Jesus as their mm -hmm. personal Lord and Savior. That was my greatest thrill and honor. You're so skinny, <laughs> but, but he, he, he has a problem. Uh, your late night Taco Bell. Yeah, oh, I talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So you, that was a tough thing for you to give up. Yeah. Tell it, about that. Well, you know, I, I, I bring that back to the uh, verse in Hebrews, you know, that says, "Lay aside every weight and yeah. sin which so easily ensnares you." And I, and I, and I show it. I kind of compare it to a weight. You know, sometimes it talks about the sin and the weight. Yeah. But what is the weight? And so I compared it in athletics as the weight for me was late night Taco Bell and, and eating. I mean, I love those, those uh, chicken flatbread sandwiches and those beefy five layer burritos. I just couldn't get enough of them. And, but it would make those weights at 6 a.m. a little bit tougher because I'd go at 11 or 12 and get one of these. But then the next day, it was just like I had to work extra hard sure. to work that off. And that was, just, that was just a weight in my life. Yeah. And so there's, there's weights in people's life. Um, you know, spiritually yeah. or in athletics yeah. um, that you got to try to avoid. You've so been married? From Taco Bell. Have you been married? <laughs> no, I have not been married. I'm single. Are you, are you, are you still <laughs> pushing him away? <laughs> pushing him away? No, pushing them away. <laughs> <laughs> to him? Uh, what, yeah. what program were you on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is not secular TV. That would work real well on secular. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm definitely open and I have, you know, I'm looking. Uh, yeah, I have, I, have a, I have a girlfriend, but uh, 
You have to be very, <laughs> you have to be very careful because he's yeah. looking at you. It's none of your business. Yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's got to be a big temptation. Oh, there's always yeah. There's definitely temptations always yeah, for sure yeah. in whatever relationship that you might have. That camera right there. Yeah. You have about two and a half minutes. Share Christ with somebody that tuned in. They don't even know why they're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know why. Absolutely. I'll do that. You know what? Jesus loves you so much. And he would have died just for you. You know, when they beat him and they hit him and they put a crown of thorns on his head and they nailed his hands to that cross and they, and they whipped him before, before the cross. They whipped him and whipped him and whipped him and whipped him with a cat of nine tails and had glass and rock on the ends of it. And he was there, and, but he was thinking of you. And when he carried that cross up the Via Della Rosa, he was thinking of you. Yes. And every time he took, every step that he took, he was thinking of you. Yes. And it kept him going. You know, he was 100% man, but he was also 100% God. And so even though he was going through all those things, he could have snapped his fingers or thought one thought, and the angels of heaven would have come and taken him away. But he kept fighting. He was fighting for our sins. Yes. And so when he, he died for you on that cross so that you can have everlasting life. But the great news of all, the greatest news of all is that it didn't stop there. Three days later, he rose again triumphantly. He loves you so much. Mm -hmm. And he wants to use your life for his glory. He wants to use your success and your disappointments and everything that you've gone through in your life. He wants to use it for his glory. And so I ask you, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, Amen. that you would just pray this after me. And if you just say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Lord, I ask you to take away my sins. Give me everlasting life. I'm sorry for everything that I've done. But God, I want you to use my life for your glory. I believe that you died and rose again on that cross. Lord, use my life for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. What an opportunity. Mm -hmm. A young man has gone through all the things that you're going through, or if you haven't, you will go through. And you know, just recently I was reading the Word of God and it just stood out because the message that, that Matt just gave, Jesus Christ was crucified and put in that ground hanging on that cross at 9 a.m. He didn't die until 3 p.m. Think of the mocking, the cursing, the challenges that he took, but he did it for you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.